the Google Pixel 7a versus the Pixel 6a. And this is a video for the time capsule. This is not a video for today. If you're watching this in May 2023, I apologize because there really is no choice between these two devices for a $200 difference for the next month or two you should pick up the 6A and be happy with your life. I really don't see a, an incentive to go ahead and buy a 7A just yet because you're getting into, at $499, you're really pushing a territory where you should be in another device, where you should be in a Pixel 7 proper, where you should be maybe in another mid-range, upper mid-range, lower level flagship device for that kind of money. This video is for six months from now. When this device is maybe $399, and this one, still new, is hovering around $299. If you can find it used now, maybe it's $250, something like that. But it's getting a close to another year older on support. Some of the features, you know, that type of deal. Where the gap is narrower between these two. And we're talking a $100 difference and not a $200 difference between these two devices. And if you already have a Pixel 6a, then you're good, man. You know, you're, you're, you don't have to worry about doing anything or upgrading until the 8a the 9a and just hang on because whatever they added to this to give it that more premium feel and to command that extra price I, I don't really think is worth it now i had two videos where i was screaming about having problems with my modem and battery life on my 7a the modem part i have sort of sorted i will go over that in a video tomorrow it seems to be an issue between at&t and the 7a they don't play nice with each other if you put a T-Mobile SIM in this, it switches off properly from 5G to 4G LTE instead of just disconnecting. So at least I've gotten to use this normally the past day or so. So I can at least have a decent video here between these two devices. So let's talk about what they changed between the generations of the 6A and the 7A. A lot of people want to focus on the display of these two devices because of the 90 hertz. And let me tell you something. The display is a difference here, but not for the reason that people think. The 90 hertz, especially if you turn off animations on your 6A, you're not going to notice it. It's nice to have. It's super smooth if you have it on, which you have to turn it on. It's not on by default, which I think it's a battery saving issue because I know the battery's not great on this thing. If you go ahead and turn off animations on your 6A, though, it is so snappy and you go through things that if you turn off animations on both, you're not going to notice the 90 hertz. If you want it, that's fine. The difference in these two displays for me and where it becomes a quality issue is that even though the 6A feels a little bit brighter and the, the brightness on the 7A is pathetic, the 7A is a better colored display where it, the saturation is better, the tones are better, the viewing experience is better, the darks and stuff like that come in. There's a little more contrast to this display. It is a better OLED panel and the colors do have a, a way of popping a little bit even with the, the brightness issues that it has. The colors on my 6A tend to be a little bit washed out. So even though it's got the extra brightness, the colors are not as vibrant and the contrast is not as good on my 6A versus my 7A. So that's a reason why the displays are a bit different. I, wireless charge, uh, just save it, okay? That is not a reason why you'd pick a 7A over 6A when the wireless charging is 5 watts. You know, I screamed about that the other day. 5 watts, and you see some of the benchmark and the charging tests that people have done. 5 watts is pathetic, pathetic. It really, you're, there's no way that you're going to sit there and put that on an office charger, throw it on, slap it on a charger real quick, get that 5, 10, 15% that you want to top off for the rest of the day, and then go about your day. Not going to happen. It's just, at that point, if that's what, if the 90 hertz and 5 watt wireless charging is the reason why people are paying $50 extra on this device, that to me is stupid. Stupid. Does the back feel better? Does the, the build feel better? Is it a nice build? Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that I will tell you is a huge difference is face unlock has been one of the best features on a Pixel device in the last year. It was phenomenal on the Pixel 7. My Pixel 7 Pro face unlock was brilliant. This is just as brilliant. I glance at it and the thing is open and it's great. And while the fingerprint sensor on the 6A hasn't been bad, remember they used a different one. There was nothing wrong with the one on the Pixel 6, but they changed it anyway. They used a different one for the Pixel 6 to the Pixel 6A. So this one's not bad. This one's been okay fingerprint-wise, but you got that face unlock that really, really makes up for it. Build in the hand, you're still feeling the, the, the metal frame either way. Yeah, did they polish it a little bit? Did they make it more aesthetically pleasing? Are the colors better? Yes, this color is phenomenal. I love the, the matching of the color visor. I, I love the frame matching it. I love the coral. It is an absolutely perfect coral. It's not too orange. It's not too red. It's not too pink. It is a brilliant coral device. 
This one, the 6A, looks like it came out of the Carter administration and was designed in the 70s with the color scheme. Remember you used to get the phones? The dial, to, the, the, the push tone, the, the phones that you get like this. You got frig- uh, refrigerators this color. It, it's, it's, you know, it's something else. I like the fact that they're, you know, I complained about this when I talked about the Google uh, Pixel XL, the original, my blue one. I wish they'd go back to some vibrant colors and they at least listened on that front and got some fantastic colors. You know, the 7, 8 camera is not as good as the 7 camera and certainly not as good as the 7 Pro camera. So you're still getting a step down camera. So if you're thinking between these two, and this one still takes a really good image and it's an older sensor, yes, but it's a sensor they use for 100 years and they have it locked in and optimized. And that brings us to another point about Google devices. And this is why it's kind of a, a time capsule video. Google devices are always a better buy six months down the line, and not just because of pricing, even though it's a significant factor, but because they kind of lock them in. It takes them a while to optimize these devices. There's always hiccups. You know, I'm going to say this in my video when I compare the A54 5G. 100 people walk into a room with a Pixel device. 20 of them are walking out with problems. You want to say it's quality control. You want to say it's software. You know, whatever it happens to be, it always seems to be the case. And it's not, you know, it, it, people didn't get together with, with write a memo and say, okay, we're all going to have problems with the fingerprint sensor. We're all going to have problems with battery life. We're all going to have problems with, with modem and connectivity. They don't do that. So when you have multiple people, is it 50%? Is it 60%? No, it's 15, 20%. But it's still aggravating and it's still frustrating if you fall into that category, which I have twice now, even though my 7A, or my 7 Pro rather, and my 6A have been phenomenal. So that's something to think about. Battery life is another big one. Getting well over six hours, uh, sometimes more on my 6A. Uh, yeah, a good day is five hours. When I was struggling with the modem and connectivity stuff, I was looking at four hours of screen on time, which was just plain sad. Uh, but And you know, a lot of people have had that issue. So I, I think it's a modem related issue. If your modem is straining back and forth all day, you're gonna get additional battery drain. Because if you go into your battery settings and you look at what's draining the battery, Mobile network is often was was at least fifteen percent of my battery drain yesterday before I made the switch, and that is a significant amount. That's a significant amount. So if you're somebody who, uh, you know, and the, and the faster eighteen watt charging, you're not going to be able to top off. So five hours on a good day is because you got to run the brightness at one hundred percent. It's not like you can sit there and, and and save on the brightness because the second that you get off of that that little bit there, it's tough to tell on camera. This is dull. This is tough to see right now at nearly 90% on the brightness. 90%. Really rough. You have to run it at 100%. That's been the same since the Pixel 4 XL. That hasn't changed. So that's something to consider. Battery life difference between these two. But the main performance, you're not going to... Listen, the Tensor is good on both. There wasn't a huge difference between the Tensor 2 and the Tensor 1. I, on, on paper, benchmarks, yeah, fine. But in real world, just everyday usage, and this is, listen, this is not a Tensor specific thing. This goes for a lot of flagship chips. It goes for Snapdragon chips as well from generation to generation. You're not going to notice a big thing. The important thing on both of these is that you're both on Tensor because we've seen it with the Google specific features that they've come out with and the feature drops. The line now seems to be Tensor, right? That's why I said a couple years ago, do not buy a Snapdragon Pixel anymore like the 5A because once Tensor gets into the user base they're going to start cutting those old snapdragons and making sure that their features are optimized and geared in and the feature drops are specifically for tensor devices and you are seeing that happen so with a 6a you're getting a tensor you know you're over that fence you're over the cut line so right now and it's come down to a price thing there's not a 200 dollars difference between these two devices go ahead and pick up a 6a links for both will be in the description but six months from now in the line six months from now if there's a hundred dollar difference, if it's on a carrier deal and there's a fifty dollar difference, you're going to want to pick up a seven A, because of the build quality, because of the slightly better display, not because of the ninety hertz. You pick up an extra year of support that has value, and it'll have six months, maybe more, of Google optimizations and bringing the phone around to where you probably would have liked it to have been on launch day. So that's what I, my thoughts between these two. If you made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Lush's day.